Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Of course, Ava, not awake yet. Better be ready to get her when she wakes up. Okay, it's already Friday, weekend, September 4, 2020. Friday morning. Okay, the gospel for today is, is a gospel passage that is not... Uh, very easy to understand for a lot of people. It's uh, it's kind of a mystery <laughs> what our Lord uh, means by this uh, comparisons that he that he makes today. But we will try to explain it as best we can. Okay, so I'd like to ask you to be very attentive and to really try to understand the uh, the connections between the, the different images that our Lord uses here in this, um, in the parables that he's giving us here. Okay, so we'll read a gospel from St. Luke, chapter 5, verses 33 to 39. The scribes and the Pharisees said to Jesus, the disciples of John the Baptist fast often <clears throat> and offer prayers. <clears throat> And the disciples of the Pharisees do the same. But yours, meaning Jesus' disciples, yours eat and drink. We don't see them fasting. They keep eating and drinking. <laughs> but the disciples of John the Baptist, the Pharisees' disciples, they fast a lot. Right? But your disciples, they keep eating. <coughs> Or at least that's the accusation. <laughs> that's the allegation that, uh, that these Jews uh, level on Jesus and his apostles. Kind of like comparing, well, you know what? Uh, maybe you're not really the real thing. Because how come we don't see your apostles fasting? But, you know, John the Baptist and the Pharisees, they, they encourage their, their disciples, their followers to fast. And they fast a lot. We don't see you doing that. We don't see your apostles doing that. Our Lord answers them in a metaphorical way. And this is where it's a little tough to understand, but we will try to understand it. <clears throat> Jesus answered them, Can you make the wedding guests fast while the bridegroom is with them? But the days will come, when the bridegroom is taken away from them, then they will fast in those days. Okay, so what's that image? Our Lord is giving the image of, well, a celebration, a feast. Okay, a few days back we, we commented on the uh, foolish virgins, remember? And how the foolish virgins were supposed to accompany the bride and the groom in, in celebrating their wedding. Okay, and the weddings of the Jewish community, they take days, 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 days to do. Okay? A lot of preparation comes into it, then they celebrate for days, eating, drinking, and feasting. And then when the bridegroom leaves already, and you know, the celebration is over, and the bride and the groom uh, begin their life journey together, well, and the rest of the community, they just go back to their normal lives until the next wedding <laughs> and and uh, that is an image of fasting what are they fasting from what uh, in the first place what is fasting in this sense it means uh, some kind of deprivation right some kind of some kind of uh, hungering for the next feast when are we going to celebrate again when we're going to have a lot of wine and food okay uh, that is an extraordinary event, right? But extraordinary events like those don't come often. So in between those extraordinary events is their ordinary events of their lives where, well, uh, they eat the normal thing. They eat, uh, you know, what's, what's common fare. And therefore, it's like a fasting period, a period of fasting from feasting from the periods of feasting, 
right? So it's a comparison between feast and common day fair. The common day fair becomes the period of fasting for them. It's fasting from feasting. So that's the image that our Lord is, is trying to make them understand. Okay? When the bridegroom is with you, when you're celebrating a wedding, you're not fasting. Right? You are enjoying yourselves, you're eating, you are having your fill. Nobody is thinking about depriving himself of the bounty of the food and, and the wine that abounds in a wedding celebration. Okay, that's one image. Then our Lord proceeds to talk about another kind of metaphor where he says, and he also told them a parable. No one tears a piece of cloth, of new cloth, to patch an old one. Otherwise, he will tear the new, he will tear the new and the piece from it will not match the old cloak. I think Mia can relate to this, right? Mia is, loves sewing. So if you have an old piece of clothing and it happens to have a tear on it or a hole, right? That, that piece of clothing, because it's older, right? The, the, uh, the fabric is weaker, right? It's a weaker kind of fabric. Because of the wear and tear that comes with an older fabric, okay? an older piece of clothing. So if you, if you cut up a piece of cloth that is new and you try to patch it on that old one, right? often than not, it's not going to work because you are sewing on the act of sewing on a new piece of cloth with thread on an old piece of cloth or clothing many times creates more damage on the old one right? than it will repair it. So that's, that's the image our Lord is saying here. Okay? So it's, it's coming from the experience of these people that you cannot cut up a piece of new cloth and patch it on an old one because it will just ruin the old one. And likewise, it says, no one pours new wine into old wineskins. Okay, this is a little bit... Uh, it's something that perhaps we don't have an experience here, but in the olden days, you know, wine doesn't come in these bottles like we have here, right? They, they, they were stored in wine, uh, sorry, in leather, or in, in uh, wineskins, okay? And apparently the chemical reaction of new wine, if you put it in an old wineskin, it will burst the old wineskin, okay? Okay. So what are those images all about? And how are they related to the bridegroom and the feast? Okay. How are they related? Okay. The relationship is this. The old cloth and the new cloth and the old wine and new old wine skin and the new wine. This is an image of the Old Testament and the New Testament. What is the Old Testament? The Old Testament is the covenant of God with His people, as revealed through the prophets and the and the and the uh, and the uh, lawgivers, Moses and, and all of the prophets. Right? That's the Old Testament. The Old Testament is where God committed Himself to be the God of His people, Israel. Okay? There was a covenant. There was a pact where God promised. To Israel that Israel the Jewish people was to be the family of God the community of God that God was going to be their people and he then they will be his God his <laughs> his his people okay uh, that's the old covenant that's the old testament with the coming of Jesus Christ Jesus Christ did not change the old. He did not. He did not. Uh, he did not say that. Oh, you forget the old covenant because that doesn't hold water anymore. Okay. In fact, he himself said, "I did not come to destroy the old new the old law, but to fulfill it," because he was the fulfillment. Right. He was the promise. 
that was promised to the Jewish people in the Old Covenant. So he did not come to destroy that old law. In fact, what he did was to fulfill that old law by, by revealing more about God the Father to his own people. You see, in the Old Testament, the only thing that the Jewish people knew about God was that, oh, he is the Almighty. He is the Creator. He is the Judge. Yes, he's also all merciful, but, you know, he is this, image of, of, of the almighty, all-powerful, all-mighty uh, 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 creator. See? He was somebody up there in a pedestal. What Jesus did was to bring him down closer to them and reveal to the Jewish people that this God, your God, the God you had a covenant with in the Old Testament, is actually more than just an almighty creator and judge and ruler. He is actually your father. He is your father. So our Lord is not changing anything from the Old Testament. Our Lord is not saying the Old Testament is no good. In fact, he is saying here is something new, a new revelation that you need to understand. It does, not, it, is, it does not destroy the old revelation. It is not incompatible with the old revelation. Okay? But it improves on it. It brings you a new dimension as to who God is for you. Okay? Now I am telling you that while all of those things that were revealed to you before is true, are true, there's more to it. There's more to that revelation. And what is that more to it? It is the fact that God is your Father. And Jesus taught us to now regard God not only as the Almighty Creator and Lord of heaven and earth, but also as our Father. That is why He taught us the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, etc., so this is the image of the old cloth and the new cloth and the old wineskin and the new wineskin. I mean the new wine, right? That you cannot combine them. You cannot combine them, not because they are incompatible, right? But because there's a new dimension to this whole thing. So do not be attached to the old things and think that that's all there is to it. No, there is more. There is more. So God, Jesus came to bring the new fulfillment of the old one. Okay? He's, encouraging, he's encouraging the Jews to, well, let's now focus on the new one. On the new one. Not that we forget the old. Okay? We keep it there. Uh, 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 behind the back of our minds because that is an important legacy. But let's transition to the new promise, to the new covenant, which is now what? That you are not only a people of God, you are in fact family. Okay? You are in fact family. You are in fact the intimate friends and family of God who are invited to the wedding feast. Who are invited to the wedding feast because the bridegroom, me, Jesus Christ, is now with you. Okay? I am the bridegroom of the church. You are the church. Let's celebrate the presence of the bridegroom now. And because we are celebrating the presence of the bridegroom, Okay? This is a time of celebration. It is not a time of fasting. It is not a time of deprivation. It is a time to celebrate. Okay? So this is the image. Of course, of course, um, our Lord or the Jews didn't understand that at that time. Say, what, what is this guy talking about? Okay? 
This is too much above our heads. What's this guy talking about? What's all of this comparison that he's trying to do? Well, a lot of it becomes clear only after our Lord goes through his death and resurrection and ascension and, and, and all of that, the history of the church. Okay? It becomes clearer and clearer and clearer later on. But at that time when he was telling all of these to the Jews, they couldn't make any sense out of it. They said, you can't understand what this means. Okay? So this is exactly what our Lord is talking about. Okay? So now, um, our Lord was with them, spent three years in their presence, okay? and, and he died and fulfilled his mission, and he resurrected and he ascended into heaven. But, and so now, so now, well, physically, he's not with us, right? He's not with us. So we are actually in a time of fasting until our Lord comes again in His glory and reunites with us, hopefully eternally with Him in heaven. If we have lived this period of fasting, this period of waiting as a time of preparation, as a time of real uh, uh, journeying towards heaven. And not getting diverted and distracted like the foolish virgins were. Okay? With other occupations that had nothing to do with celebrating the presence of the bridegroom in their lives. Okay? So hopefully we really uh, uh, use up this time we have on earth as a time of fasting and preparation for the second coming of our Lord. Okay? This is what this whole uh, imagery here uh, uh, is telling us. Okay? But you see, you know what? We are not completely without our Lord. Because while He has gone up to heaven during His ascension, He saw to it that He will also remain with us. And He remains with us through the Eucharist. The Eucharist, Joe, right? Sophia, the Eucharist. The Eucharist. So, the Eucharist is there. The Eucharist is with us. In essence, the bridegroom is still with us in the Holy Eucharist. So yes, to an extent, we are in a continuous time of, of celebration. We celebrate the fact that our Lord is with us in the Holy Eucharist, but at the same time, in between the periods when we can avail of the Eucharist, we are in fasting mode. We are in deprivation mode because we don't have Him physically with us. Okay? So again, this is another image that we can use uh, as far as this bridegroom and the presence of the bridegroom is concerned. We can relate this image to the Eucharist. That every time we receive the Eucharist, we have our Lord physically present with us and we can celebrate His presence with us. Right? And when we are not participating or partaking of that Eucharist, we are in fasting. We are in a period of deprivation. We are in a period of separation. Hopefully it doesn't take too long to celebrate another feast, another wedding feast where we will be with the bridegroom and receive him again. See? So beautiful, beautiful imagery that our Lord uses to help us understand uh, the, the divine realities, the divine realities that we are encountering, uh, not only on a daily basis, but, uh, you know, it's, it's a picture of our whole life. It's a picture of this whole journey of life that we are experiencing. The image of the bridegroom and the feast is very real to us Catholics who understand our faith, who understand what it, what it is we're dealing with, right? who understand what Jesus has come to.
to reveal to each and every one of us and has invited all of us to participate in. See? Beautiful, beautiful. You see, our Lord is so poetic. Our Lord is so is so uh, skilled in his uh, storytelling and the imagery and the metaphors that he uses to teach us certain very important lessons about our life of faith. Okay? And we can bring all of these things to our prayer, to our personal prayer, and to, so that we can understand them with more depth and we can understand how to apply these things in our own lives. Okay? So beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I encourage all of you to uh, uh, read up on this this gospel of today and and, uh, and and gather more insights as as deeply as you can because it has a lot of repercussions with the way we live our lives of preparation, of journeying through through this life towards heaven. Okay, that's it for us, folks. I hope everybody has a good day today and have a good weekend ahead of you. Okay? We are off to Mass. Have a good day, everybody. We'll see you again next week, hopefully. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Holy Joseph. Just bye. 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 <laughs>